is Damon Tordini. I'm the product manager for SolidWorks Flow Simulation at Hawkridge Systems. And this is going to be a roughly 10 minute overview of how you would do a wind loading analysis using SolidWorks Flow Simulation. So among our offerings here at Hawkridge Systems, of course, we have a suite of analysis tools. And that includes both the SolidWorks Simulation suite of products as well as Simulia Abacus and of course our mentoring and consulting services that we offer. Now if you wanted to do some sort of a wind loading analysis, we would typically recommend that would be done in SOLIDWORKS Flow Simulation as it's not only a very easy to use but also very powerful and realistic CFD tool which can calculate the behavior of gases or liquids as well as heat transfer inside or around almost any product. Now if you were to use that tool to simulate the loading of for example a, a wind or really air aerodynamics problem, you probably want to know what the behavior of the structure will be from those wind loads. And thankfully the SOLIDWORKS simulation tools are integrated and allow you to do some results translation. For example, you could send the pressure results or even temperature results that you might find from flow simulation to an FEA study in SOLIDWORKS simulation and figure out the stress and displacement of that structure. As I'll show you, we also have options for exporting to other tools, for example, Smoothly Abacus, but this is going to be the smoothest and most integrated workflow. So if I wanted to do an analysis like this, uh, I've got SOLIDWORKS open here and we'll take a look at this water tower model that I have created. I could also, of course, import any third-party format like IGIS or STEP or Parasolid. But if I want to analyze this in flow simulation, first of all I simply need to turn on the add-in to do that in SOLIDWORKS and then I can start a new project using what we call the wizard. And so the wizard will walk us through the most important steps here. Let's call this, let's say Rev A, 80 miles per hour for the conditions that we're going to test and this is our sort of baseline design. And so we'll step through and we need to pick a unit system that we're comfortable with, for example American units and we might want to customize the velocity to be let's say miles per hour or whatever our normal requirement or conditions are in. And then we can set the scope of the analysis by deciding if we want to include for example thermal effects or radiation or even doing a transient analysis which could see for example what a changing wind load looks like or if there are any unsteady flow phenomenon for example of von Karman vortex street. None of that's really important for this problem. We just want a steady state pressure result, but we do want an external analysis. So we'll select that and move along to picking what our fluid is, which in this case is of course air. And you'll notice that flow simulation is going to predict both the laminar and turbulent behavior of the air based on what we call the K epsilon turbulence model. And so the software will predict where that turbulent boundary layer is formed and where you've got flow separation. We can define things like wall roughness if we think that'll affect the boundary layer. And then of course we need to put in the environmental conditions like the temperature and the pressure of the air and what that free stream velocity might look like, let's say 80 miles an hour. So that's most of the setup. It's very simple to create a lot of these simulations. Uh, and of course there's a large suite of other conditions we could put in if we chose to, for example, other types of thermal conditions and materials and boundary conditions and things related to uh, the restriction of the flow if necessary. We don't need any other physical conditions for this type of analysis. However, I do have something defined in my project tree called a goal. And there's actually three of them. And these goals are like sensors to tell me what the most important results are that I'm looking for in the simulation. And that helps me keep track of the progress of the solver as well as ensure that the result is of a certain quality. So I can run this simulation and by the way I'm doing this at a, a relatively basic mesh here which flow simulation is going to create for me automatically using its Cartesian meshing and refinement technology. So I'll run this analysis here and it's only going to take probably about 15-20 seconds or so because it's a nice simple model and a simplified mesh. But right away, I'll be able to get uh, those goal values that I had specified. For example, the average 
pressure and my force. I can see that I've got about 40,000 pounds of wind loading on the structure. And then I've got a variety of visual results I could look at in flow to sort of evaluate qualitatively what's happening. I could see a cut plot like this showing the velocity contours and look for recirculation or dead zones. I can see that in an animation of the flow trajectories here. And I can also show a contour plot on the surface of the model itself of that pressure distribution. And these are the results that I really need to get an accurate structural analysis done. I could just create a stress analysis where I type in a 40,000 pound load, but of course that would assume it's uniform if I, would, if I didn't have a CFD tool like this. And to get an accurate result, I need to map this true gradient of pressure. Now, if I was using an external program like, for example, Simulia Abacus, it is possible to export results from flow simulation. And for example, we can export the surface results and select all of the different options that we have, for example, pressure. And those will be sent to a text file, like so. And so it is possible to import this kind of data, including the XYZ coordinates of the pressure loading, into another simulation program. So there's some flexibility there, but if you're looking for the smoothest workflow, the easiest way to get a structural result is going to be to use the SOLIDWORKS simulation tool and take advantage of that integration. So I can actually hide all my flow results here. I don't need them. And I can go turn on the SOLIDWORKS simulation add-in. And this is going to let me create a new study. For example, a static study, which is going to test just the static equilibrium structural behavior here. And of course, I can do things like define my materials. I can put fixtures on, fixing the base, and a variety of loads like gravity or pressures or forces. But I can also include those flow effects, which I've already calculated in SOLIDWORKS flow simulation. And it's simply a matter of pointing to the appropriate results file. And then we can see a preview of what that pressure gradient would look like mapped onto our stress analysis, just to confirm the results match what we saw before. And we can, of course, create a mesh now. And we can use both the solid mesh or even shell mesh that we have in SOLIDWORKS simulation using shell elements here. And we're still able to map those pressure results over from flow. And of course, run the study and get a very quick stress result, or perhaps displacement. And this is showing we're going to have about 12 millimeters of deflection at the top of the water tower. So if I wanted to reduce that, of course, I could change the model. That might change the wind loading behavior, and it also will change the structural result. But thanks to the integration here, it's very easy to go through and do that. Uh, I can, of course, change one of the features in my model. For example, I'll adjust one of these dimensions. Maybe I want to make the base of the structure wider, which will probably give it a little better support. But that's also more surface area, so it's probably going to increase the wind loading. And I need to know what that trade-off is going to be. So I can go back to flow simulation here. And I can copy my existing project and simply run it again on this new version of the model, which I've done. And it turns out in this case, if I do that, I can go look at my goals and find out that the wind loading has gone up. It's about 44,000 pounds now, so about 10% more load. But the question is, will I have more deflection or less deflection? Because now my structure is a little more robust. So again, it could... Uh, export those results if I wanted to to an external program like Abacus, but for a much more streamlined process, I could go straight into SOLIDWORKS simulation. So we could unload these flow results and go back to our stress analysis tool. And of course, we could import those pressure results again, the new ones that are based on the uh, modified flow simulation study that I did. And now I can run this a second time and see if my structural behavior has changed. And as it turns out, making that design change reduces the displacement in this thing for about 30% uh, oh, or so. Now I'm down to about 8 millimeters of deflection. So without having to leave the same interface, I've been able to create or import a model, run an analysis figuring out what the wind loading will be on the structure, 
test out what the structural deflection will be based on those loads, make a design change, and see how all those things are affected. So we really think this is the best process to doing this kind of analysis uh, on any of your engineering designs. Thank <music> you.